Hello, Hayden here. And in today's video, we're going to be saving a disaster file that one of my viewers has sent in for me. So I'd like to thank, and forgive me if I mispronounce this, Lavelli Mathias uh, for sending in this file. And their problem is that they've got a model that they've animated with shape keys and drivers with the action editor in Blender, and they want to import that action over with the shape keys. However, it appears that the shape keys aren't working in Unity. I've actually just made a video on how to use shape keys and the action editor within Blender together. Uh, so if you haven't watched that already, it will be up in the top right hand corner of the screen now. Okay, let's jump into this file and let's explore what's going on here. Okay, so this is the file that the user has sent in. This is fresh, this is just what I've been sent, and we're gonna take a look at how we can go about fixing it. Now, if we were to export this file out as it is now and put it into Unity, what we will get, if we come over to Unity, is an asset like this. Now, the animation clip that he wants to test is this Game Blink test. So if I run this, we'll see that we get a little bit of shading going on here, there's a few things happening, but there's no blink per se. Now let's take a look at what that animation looks like inside of Blender. So if we come over here and press play, we should see that they blink. And this is what the viewer wants. They, they want to be able to replicate this blink. Now, there's a few things that I would do to get this working. First of all, I, I think using the NLA uh, isn't necessary. I'm just going to delete all those tracks. Um, what we're going to use instead is we're going to use the action editor. Now, yes, technically actions are stuffed into the NLA, um, but I think it's just easier just to use the action editor on the armature here. Um, another thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to turn on outline select it to be on because it's off uh, inside this animation thing for some reason. Um, let's pop over to action editor, that's good. Let's go into pose mode and we can see all of our actions are here. That F next to them, uh, that's good. That basically means they're saved into the Blender file. If we exit out, uh, they should remain in the Blender file. If there was a zero next to them, there is the risk that they will be deleted essentially wiped from the Blender file. Uh, so I'm gonna create a new pose here and I'm gonna call this rest. I like doing this when exporting into Unity. It just makes things a little easier. I'm gonna put tick that shield to make it a fake user, which is what that F stands for. And what I'm gonna do is something a little bit peculiar. So if we take a look at their model and we can see that the blink technically speaking at one is open. So really this is, should be called open, but you know, you got your blink here. So it's kind of reverse logic from how traditionally I would create a, a blink animation. I would make it with the eyes open and then make it blink later on. Now that's not to say that this is wrong. Please don't think for a second that's what I'm suggesting. Uh, this is just a different way of doing it. Now, what we're gonna do next is in our rest animation that we've set up, our rest action, we're going to set the blink bone, this is the driver bone for the blink animation, we're going to set that to zero uh, on, well, basically we're gonna reset it. So Alt G and Alt R, you could also do Alt S if you just wanted to make sure. What that does is it clears the movement, rotation and scale. So now, his eyes are closed. Now this is very important for Unity because when we import into Unity, Unity likes to kind of know what the base mesh should look like. It should, it should be the base position of the resting mesh. So if you have an animation that has changed something, then that's going to follow through. Imagine, let's say, um, one eye was open and one eye was closed, and then I run a blink on one. Well, the one that's open won't blink because it's already open. And the one that's closed will blink because it's in the base position. It's in the rest position that it's looking for. Um, and that's because in this file, the blink is open. 
Um, so that's why if the if the mesh was open in Unity, like we have here, basically it's it's already starting off in an open position. So how can it open further? It can't. So we need to tell it to. So we've got this uh, basically key here. This is the rest pose. I would probably do it to all the bones, but I see that uh, if I were to do it to all the bones, so Alt R Alt G, uh, it kind of resets the position and maybe you don't want that. Um, so I'm just gonna not do that. You most likely wanna turn this into a rest position though, if you are making, if you're looking to make it a little more easy. Uh, there's one final thing that we have to do. This is a little strange, so bear with me on this one. I'm going to select uh, pretty much all the meshes and I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. Yeah, I know, this is really weird. Uh, what that's going to do is it's just basically going to recalculate all the vertex IDs and positions. I think... Don't quote me on that, but I know for a fact that it does help with refreshing um, the positions of the vertices when we go to export this in an FBX format. So I'm going to go to file now and I'm going to export it into the file. And I'm going to call this version 2. And we'll take a look at the difference this makes. So this might take a little while to export because of the size of the file there are definitely things that could be optimized a little bit better, especially for a game engine. But that's not to say this is uh, absurdly high poly. It's not. And depending on their target platform, it's perfectly acceptable. Um, I don't know much about the target platform that they are making this game for. I just was given the file and I'm just helping out with the blink. So let's just take a look now at this thing. Oh, look, they come on in with their eyes closed. There we go. And if we go to blink test, we should see that it's blinking. Now, notice that the bottom uh, eyelids aren't blinking. The reason for this comes down to a little quirk. So in this bottom eyelid, we'll see that there's a blink shape key and it's being turned off. Instead of turning it off, you're better just to turn it to zero if you're not using it. This will ensure that the data is usable in Unity. So let me export this once more. Export FBX, and we'll just override that file that we've just made. Okay, so now when we go in here, we go to the game blink test clip, we'll see that that lower eyelid is in the correct position now. Um, and that's because Unity doesn't actually care if the shape key is on or off in Blender. It just looks at if a shape key is there. And if a shape key is there, it's just gonna read the value on that shape key. It doesn't care if it's on and off. So make sure that you, if you are, uh, if you've got a shape key that you don't want visible, turn it to zero rather than turning it off because Unity won't recognize that. But here we go now. So we've successfully implemented the blink animation from this file now. So all that we had to do was we had to ensure that the rest position uh, was essentially closed when we export out. That's very important. Um, going into edit mode as well was a really important point. Um, what that allowed us to do is it allowed Blender to sort of recalculate the vertices and it just kind of forced it to ensure that everything was in the correct position when it exported out. What might have been happening here is that perhaps that they built the eyelids originally uh, in a little bit of a different way and the vertices potentially might have been being read uh, in an incorrect position. Turning everything to edit mode sort of kind of kicks it a little bit. It's kind of like movie clips where you like tap some, like tap one of those lights that are flickering and then it just works. It's sort of a bit like that. It's, it's, it's not an ideal situation, but it does help. So uh, let's now, we've fixed that problem. Let's just take a look at 
the rest of the model and look at some things that I would change if I was uh, using this in a game. So if we come over here to statistics, we can see that currently the triangles on this work is about 134,000. Um, that's a lot. That is a lot. Um, now, depending on your target platform, it might not actually be that much. So if you're targeting uh, a bit more high-end PCs, that's fine. If you're targeting mobile, that's probably not a good bet, especially if you're targeting Android. Um, just because there's such a varying degree of difference in Android phones, uh, it's quite a wide margin that you need to be able to support. So 134,000 triangles is probably needs to be a bit more optimized than that. If we go into edit mode here, we can see that there's a lot of unnecessary polygons in my opinion. Uh, it looks to me that the person sculpted it and then used either a uh, automated remeshing tool to kind of get this result rather than manually retopologizing it. Uh, if I were you, I would go about manually retopologizing it. You'll end up with a far more superior mesh uh, that is able to do a lot more. If we, you know, just to kind of give you an example of that. If we were to just take this thing, I'm just gonna get rid of all of this. Oh, you have a subdivision. Interesting. Um, I don't know why you have a subdivision. Interesting, okay. That's curious. Don't use a subdivision. Um, wow, okay, so that's even in interesting. Um, Okay, I just want to prove something. So if I go to decimate here and just collapse uh, this, uh, we're down to almost 2000 polygons and the readability is still pretty good because that's what we're worried about in games. We're not worried about the density of the mesh, we're worried about readability, silhouette, shape and form. We can get down to 2000 polygons. You can easily optimize this mesh um, for a game engine now. Don't worry about all this stuff going on here. That's just because I'm using a decimate function rather than manually retopologizing it. Uh, manual retopology is a bit of an art form, but the results are really good. And anyone that's in game development, I highly suggest learning. Um, I highly suggest learning it. Uh, another big problem is as well is you've split the character up into multiple meshes. This isn't good because essentially you're doing a draw call for each of the meshes, I believe. And that's going to really bog down the performance of your application. So you want to combine everything into a single mesh. This is going to take a little bit of time, uh, especially because we've already got the blink on here. Um, but just as an example, let's just duplicate this to kind of show you what I mean by this. Uh, I'm also going to change the animation here to blink just so we can see it. So we've got our blink. Now, if I was to combine this mesh to here, we'll see blink does appear. However, it's stuck in that pose. What you want to do before you join the thing together is you want to right click on the purple value here. If you're not, if you don't know already, purple value means that it's a driver and you just want to copy the driver. Then you can join it together with control J, come to blink and you can then paste that driver in. And then that should then follow along. So now you've just combined these two together, which is really good. Uh, but one very important thing, if I was to try and export this out into Unity, it wouldn't work. If we go to File, Export, FBX, and then we go down to, oh yeah, here it is actually, Apply Modifiers is on. And if we look at what this says, it says warning prevents exporting of shape keys. Uh, the only one that it doesn't do that to is with, with Armature. Um, so you need to get rid of this subdivision because it won't work or apply it either or. I wouldn't apply it though, because that's just like, uh, like you don't, yeah, just get rid of it.
Um, now, yeah, I, I understand that you probably, you know, you've, you've probably don't want to optimize this mesh because you've already got all this shape key data on it. Uh, in the long run, it will be better for you to do that. Uh, another thing I'm seeing here is this stretching. Uh, this could be caused by a number of things. Uh, most likely, let's just take a look in here, shall we? Let's go to normals. Auto smooth is on. I'm going to turn that off. Now, the reason why auto smooth was causing those problems is because most likely, if we go under geometry data, there is custom split normals. Which there is. I'm just going to turn this up to 180. This is good because then you can come back in and you can create uh, the split normals that you want. You can do that by just selecting an edge and then doing edge mark sharp. Uh, you could also use the normals, uh, split normals from within here and then use R and then N to rotate them, but that's in the more advanced topic. I'd like to thank Lavelli so much for sending this file in. Uh, I think it's really, really awesome and I can't wait to see what they do with it. If you or someone else that you know is having problems with Blender files, I am thinking about starting a series where I uh, take a look at Blender files and fix them up. If you'd like for me to consider your file, just send it to my email, which can be found on my channel's page. I might not be able to get to everyone's file, and if you're learning Blender, I highly suggest heading over to blendertutorials.org, which is my website for teaching people how to use Blender effectively. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that uh, everyone's taken away at least something little from this video. Uh, I know that I have. I didn't realize beforehand what a big difference uh, actually going into edit mode made for some meshes and fixing some problems up. So yeah, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.